One scholar advises China to give up Putin immediately. Source, Katsuji Nakazawa, China needs to drop Putin now, scholar insists, Nikkei Asia, government advisor says Beijing should stand on the right side of history. China cannot be tied to Putin and needs to sever, with him as soon as possible. These words were written by a prominent Chinese scholar, and it has dominated discussion among Chinese foreign and security experts in recent days. The bold proposal to sever ties with Russian President Vladimir Putin came from Hu Wei, a political scientist who works for the State Council Office of the Chinese government headed by Premier Li Keqiang. Of this paper is also worthy of attention. It said that Hu also served as president of the Shanghai Public Policy Research Association. From the very first lines, the author stated that the article did not represent any partisanship, merely the views of one scholar. However, the position of Hu a scholar with access to Beijing's Zhongnanhai region, where the Chinese leadership's offices are located suggests that he has many supporters behind him. Nor is it possible. Coincidentally, an article calling for a fundamental reversal of China's Ukraine policy was published just before a seven-hour marathon meeting between top diplomat Yang Jiechi and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan at Rome. Who doesn't hesitate to get straight to the point? Even if Russia captures Ukraine and forms a puppet government, Western sanctions and a wave of uprisings inside Ukraine will make it difficult for Putin to achieve his desired goals, he wrote. Russia will be unsustainable and will eventually decline, which who predicts will happen within the next few years. China should avoid playing with both sides, he said, should give up its neutral position, and adopt a dominant global position. If China played a role in ending war, possibly nuclear war, he concluded, its tense relations with Western nations would ease, and they could Putin's blitzkrieg strategy has failed. The international coalition against Russia is actually stronger than it seems. Under such circumstances, who recommended that China quickly end its collusion with Russia and move to the winning side? The article was published on March 5, the opening day of the annual session of the National People's Congress. Country Classified as for evaluation and reference by China's highest decision makers, this article has been forwarded to leaders, including Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Communist Party and President of the Communist Party of China. Country A week later, on March 12, the article was published in the US China Perception Monitor, an online publication site operated by the Carter Center. At the time of the article in the hands of Chinese leaders, 10 days have passed since Russia invaded Ukraine. It is clear that what Russia hoped would be a flash campaign to overthrow President Volodymyr Zelensky's Ukrainian government had failed. The article was taken down from the Chinese internet after it was published internally about approximate a week. It can be said that WHO and the publishing agency are confident they will not be punished for publishing this frank analysis. WHO is a professor at the School of Marxism, a division of the party school in Upper Sea. He is also an analyst at the Shanghai Academy of Xi Jinping Thought on Socialism with Chinese Characteristics in the New Age. His connections suggest links to major forces. Ruled in Shanghai. He is also a member of the Charhar Institute, an independent policy institute based in Zhangjiaka, Hebei Province. Russia's special military campaign against Ukraine has caused great controversy in China. Who noted at the beginning of the article, thereby confirming this situation. Supporters and opponents have indeed been split into two irreconcilable oppositions. The harsh reaction to the article proves that point. This person is a civil servant at the State Office's Center for Public Policy Studies, said a left-wing party member. If he openly waved the pro-us, anti-Russian flag, that would be a big problem. Another said, on the surface, it seems to be just whose personal opinion. But judging from his title, there are certainly influential leaders behind. China's extreme left, also known as the left Maoists, has been suppressed. Forced to remain silent until the time of Hu Jintao, Xi Jinping's predecessor. They are now at the heart of the Sino-Russian partnership, cheering for Putin. As pointed out two weeks ago, in the same column, disagreements over Ukraine persist even among the seven cities. Member of the Politburo Standing Committee the party's top decision-making body. After Xi Jinping meeting with Putin on February 4, the seven commissioners discussed the Ukraine issue thoroughly, during the Beijing Olympics.
and they do not share the same view. According to the policy still in place to date, China prefers to use the term special military operation rather than war in the state media. It also maintains that although the interests of Russia and Ukraine should be considered, the West should be responsible for the current situation, as they have tried to expand NATO to the east. Moreover, China China also thinks that causing trouble with Russia, which seems to be on the verge of victory, would be foolish. China expects that the war in Ukraine will come to a clear conclusion and that the fighting will be over before April 4. 03, Opening Day of the Beijing Paralympic Games But this expectation has been betrayed. China's stubbornness has damaged its international image. Andrew Parsons, President of the International Olympic Committee for Disabilities, has called for peace. Peace at both the opening and closing ceremonies of these Olympics. However, when state-owned China Central Television broadcast the Parsons' speeches, they skipped the session. Translate, or change the wording of passages referring to peace. The contradiction in logic also appeared at Li Keqiang's last press conference as Prime Minister. Addressing the press on March 11, Li absolutely did not take any questions from the Russian media, in order to prevent China's image from deteriorating. He also did not mention the unlimited friendship between China and Russia, which was confirmed in the February 4 joint statement by Xi and Putin. Although it is difficult to access the controversial article of WHO, but that hasn't stopped a heated online debate about it in China. The debate shows a clear gap between Chinese state media, which continue to report pro-Russian style, and public opinion. While disagreement arose within China, a meeting between senior American and Chinese officials in Rome was scheduled. Sullivan raised concerns about China's support of Russia with Yang. This action comes after the Financial Times reported that after invading Ukraine, Russia asked China for additional military equipment and economic support. Duong told Sullivan that China would assist. Cease fire negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. However, Chinese state media did not specifically report whether he would respond to the U.S. request to stop supporting Russia. It is difficult for Xi Jinping, who signed the Russia-China joint statement dated today. February 4, quickly reversed the policy that China had adhered to until now. But China's holding of high-level talks with the U.S., which Washington reports has been known to Beijing for two months before, at this stage it shows that China has changed a bit. According to the report, Duong does not directly criticize the U.S. on Ukraine, nor does it object to sanctions against Russia. This contrasts with his behavior in Alaska just a year ago, when the diplomat publicly lashed out at the U.S. delegation. In his controversial article, Hu said that as of March 5, China it's almost time to make a decision. There is still about a week or two before China loses its niche, he wrote. China must act decisively. Is it a coincidence that the Duong Sullivan meeting took place less than two weeks after Hu's proposal? China is currently at an important crossroads. Katsuji Nakazawa is a journalist and senior editor of Nikkei, currently living in Tokyo. He spent seven years as a resident reporter in China and later became chief of the China Bureau. He received the 2014 Vanueta International Journalist Award.